Hi, this is Mr. Cordes, and today, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to talk about Lord of the Flies, Chapter 4. Looking at this close reading passage, this is one of my favorites. This is where Jack begins to transform more so into a savage than he's already been. Um, he's been this really uh, headstrong, kind of cruel, bully-type figure, character in our story, and this is almost when he begins to become mean and savage and uncivilized. And so as you look through, um, there'll be several questions to answer down here at the bottom, uh, just three of them. Um, going over them real quickly, circle the verbs in the first paragraph. Um, you can highlight or underline if that's a little bit better when annotating on this document. Um, describe the progression of Jack's actions and self. So use the verbs, the action words, to show that progression of what is going on for Jack and what's going on for him as a person. The second one is to list the characters, uh, characters, list the colors in the passage. Um, uh, William Golding actually uh, uses colors in this passage to kind of help us see, help us see the transition. A lot of colors have specific References, you know, like black, darkness, death, red, blood, power, um, you know, there, the, blue could be for, you know, life giving like water. There's lots of different things that we associate colors with. And so you kind of want to see the transition that happens here for him. Um, what significance do the colors hold? What do they represent? Note the color order in the beginning of the text versus the end. So he'll describe the colors first and then he'll describe them at the end. It's very uh, interesting how they how they change. What is the significance of that color order? Um, and then offer your personal insights. OK, the last question that we have is what is happening to Jack kind of alluded to that in the beginning of this video. Um, what is he turning into? What has he become? What has he left behind? Why is he changing? Describe his transformation and how this passage relates to the content of chapter three. Okay. So this is the beginning part of chapter four. You need to think back to chapter three. What has gone on during that chapter that kind of helps transition into this chapter as well? Okay. So we're going to use, we're going to use both chapters. Um, but remember, a close reading passage is just looking at one's particular piece while having head knowledge of the events that surround it. OK, so just like if you watch uh, a television show, you may watch one episode that's 20 minutes or 45 minutes, you know, like one one episode. But in your mind, you know what happens before and you kind of allude to what happened. Like it's that holistic idea of of a story that, you know, in your head. OK. So let's look at this chapter, chapter four. It says, Jack planned his new face. Jack planned his new face. He made one cheek and one eye socket white. Then he rubbed red over the other half of his face and slashed a black bar of charcoal across from right ear to left jaw. He looked in the pool for his reflection, but his breathing troubled the mirror. Simon Eric, give me a coconut, an empty one. He knelt holding the shell of water. A rounded patch of sunlight fell on his face and the brightness appeared in the depths of the water. He looked in astonishment, no longer at himself, but at an awesome stranger. He felt the water and leapt, excuse me, he split the water and leapt to his feet, laughing excitedly. Beside the pool, his uh, sinuous body held up a mask that drew his eyes and appalled them. He began to dance and his laughter became bloodthirsty, snarling. He capered towards Bill and the mask was a thing of its own. Look at that. Look at that personification. The mask was a thing of its own. Almost like Jack is no longer present and this mask is just what's coming forward, right? Behind uh, which Jack hid liberated from shame and self-consciousness. So it's almost like this mask has now become this way of Jack releasing his inhibitions and just going with his instinct. The red of the face, excuse me, the face of red and white and black swung through the air and jigged towards Bill. Bill started uh, laughing, then suddenly he felt silent and blundered away through the bushes. Okay, so here you see Jack 
paint his face in the very beginning. Um, you'll notice uh, it says, let's say, circle of verbs, describe the progression of Jack's self. So if we just look at this paragraph and look at the verbs, okay, he planned, he made, rubbed, look at that. So planned, um, let's see here, made, rubbed, okay, all of those are distinctive action. You'll notice rubbed is a little bit different than um, just made or planned, right? Over one half of his face and slashed a black bar of charcoal across the right ear to the left jaw. So now, when you look at this, look at those verbs, plant, sat around, thought of it, made, just kind of piecing things together, rubbed a little, he has to have a little bit more energy to rub and then slashed, right? Slash is a very violent movement. Um, he looked in the pool and his breathing troubled the water. So he is now breathing so heavily that the pool of water begins to ripple and he can't see his reflection. So notice that progression. Okay. The second part, describe the progression of Jack's actions in self. He's slow, think, and begin to become more violent, just like when he's painting. So he paints, um, uh, the, the, he paints his face with those colors. If you look at question number two, it says list the colors in the passage. So the first one, it goes, let's see, white. White usually, usually sometimes means purity or innocence, um, or, or like good, right? Then rubbed red all over the other half. So red, okay, a little bit more vibrant color, stands out, stronger. Sometimes it represents blood. Sometimes it represents um, like heart and love. I, I don't think this is representing love in any way. Um, over his flesh and then a black bar. So almost this idea of slashing through the innocence of the white and letting the red stay there, right? So that's the first part. We've got white, red, and then black, okay? If you look towards the end of the passage, it says the face was red, white, and black. So almost like the idea of white being the innocent is now sandwiched between this red savagery and this black kind of death and violent um, uh, color, right? And so now it's, now it's a little bit different. Um, obviously, Jack is progressing. You see here where he leapt up and it's like the mask has taken over. So imagine it's Halloween time. You put on a mask. You almost become a different person because you're able to hide behind that and, you know, you become a different person, right? All those little kids out there in costumes, they put on a superhero costume and suddenly they're acting, you know, they stand up brave and tall and run and jump and do all these things. And so that that releases their inhibitions. They want to, to be that character. So now that Jack has painted his face, it says here, besides the pool, um, he began dancing and his laughter became bloodthirsty snarling. The mask was a thing of its own. Ooh. Love that. The mask was a thing of its own. It begins to take take apart um, his his character. He becomes more savage because he's no longer a church choir boy, right? He is, or a not a church choir boy, just a choir boy in a boarding school. He is now a thing of its own, like a, the savage, right? The, the hunter has come out. Um, it begins to laugh. The face was red, white, and black swung through the air. Um, I always think when he talks about that blood, thirsty, snarling, if you've ever seen a movie where the character kind of just begins to go insane and um, has like that moment and he begins to like methodically laugh to himself, like I think of like the Joker from the Batman series. I think of any like James Bond villain um, I think of any, like even like Thanos from the Avenger series, right? There's always like this evil guy that just kind of has this laugh that's bloodthirsty and snarling. And so it's like the malicious nature kind of builds in him. Um, all of that right here can coincide with number three. What is happening to Jack? Okay. What is he turning into? What has he become? What has he uh, left behind? Like, what is happening to him? So look at the events of Jack's interaction in chapter three. 
what's going on for him now as he begins to paint his face and what is that transformation that's happening? So even here where it says relates to the contents of chapter three, you can say chapter three and chapter four. Okay. That would be sufficient as well. Um, take some time to get some good quality answers for this. Um, this is going to be our next analytical paragraph. So we wrote an analytical paragraph on the close reading passage for number two. We're going to write another one for this chapter for chapter four and Jack. So if you're looking, what is the, to allude to an analytical paragraph, you have to have two items. What's the author's purpose? And what is the literary element here? Our author, William Golding is talking about the transition of civil to savage Jack's deterioration, almost dehumanization that's being moved from one to the next. But then ladies and gentlemen, then to the moment of oh my gosh i just lost my train of thought can you did you see that did you see that happen like i just lost my train of thought how does that happen sorry there we go jacks everyone needs a moment the author's purpose the author's message in this moment is how jack is deteriorating the literary element that he's using to do this is the color and the mask right? The symbolic nature of the color, because the first time he slashed with the black, right? He crosses off death, almost slashed is, is almost like this um, very violent with, with a knife, like slashing into his old self. So the new self can come out. Right. And it's interesting that the colors shift. It's interesting that um, the white innocent is there first, but then later it's almost sandwiched as if as if it is slowly moving away. So for our analytical paragraph, we're going to be talking about um, the author's purpose. What is Golding trying to say about Jack in this moment? And then we're also trying to say he does that through the use of color and the mask. And he uses that to, to create this new character or this um, new, new attitude and personality of Jack. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to stop before I, fumble over my words again. Take a moment, go through, make sure you've got the answers to this, um, to this question or to these questions. Make sure that you hold on to, to this um, so that you can use it for your analytical paragraph. Love this chapter. It's so great. Thanks guys for being patient with me as I fumbled over things, but hopefully you understand the complexity of this passage now that we've analyzed it together.